interested to talk to Matt Stajan. Very interested. 1,003 NHL games. Flames, Maple Leafs, play to the Belleville Bulls. He's a Mississauga guy. And now the latest assistant coach of the Calgary Hibben. And he joins us from, I can tell, the Saddle Dome. How you doing, Matt? <laughs> I'm good. How are you? Very well, man. I appreciate you coming on. I, I, listen, we've been trying to get a hold of you for a while, going through the Hitman to do it. And listen, I'm a big Calgary sports fan. I saw you on Sportsnet, watched you for years, and now, as a player, and now you're with the Hitman coaching staff. Can you talk about the decision post-career for you to kind of settle into what you're going to do? And it looks like you now have a great fit. Yeah, it just it is challenging as a, as a player, as you see and you hear from a lot of guys. Um, but for me, I was just feeling it out. Um, I did the media thing and I enjoyed it, um, but I, I wanted something a little bit more consistent and, and permanent. And coaching's always been something on my mind. It, it, the only thing holding me back was, um, you know, being away too much. Um, yeah, and when this opportunity came where with where we're living in Calgary to, to jump into the WHL with Calgary Hitman, it was a great opportunity that we uh, that would be a great fit with me and my wife and, and our family. So I'm, I'm happy to be aboard. You know, uh, a lot of things to talk about with you, Matt. I mean, looking back at your career, the, the, things jump out at me. And one is a thousand and three games. How important was it for you to get to a thousand? And what was your thousandth game like? What do you remember about it? Yeah, it was well. Obviously, when you when you get close to that number, it, it's on your mind. Um, so it's a proud moment for sure uh, for any player. I think you know it, it's a milestone. You get a silver stick and and everything that comes with it. But more importantly, it's it's just you know recognition to you look back at everything you've been through in your career to, to just get to the NHL and then to be there uh, for that long and, and year after year um, having to push for your job and you know there's always someone trying to take your job at the NHL level and uh, you know so just proud uh, to, to reach that and you think about all the people that helped you reach that and, and pushed you and, and um, you know and, and for myself I play on a lot of teams that were in rebuilding years and, and um, you know didn't have unfortunately a lot of playoff opportunities so you know that, that's another thing i had to overcome and, and mentally just stay with it and uh you know i was, was i was proud and um my thousand game wasn't very memorable because we we actually got shut out here at the saddle dome i think against uh, anaheim um but uh you know i think it, it's just you, you remember everything about uh your whole career when you hit it, it's a it's a time you look back on, on so much and uh I was fortunate to to get to that number because early in that season I was getting scratched a lot and um, you know I had to work myself back into the lineup just to to make it there and and um, and I was fortunate to get there. You see a lot of guys fall just short, so uh, I'm happy I got there. Yeah, absolutely. So I'll just say, be the latest to say congratulations on that. That is one heck of a milestone. It's a it's a fantastic fantastic career, Matt. But now. Do you see this coaching thing as a way of giving back? I mean, it's not just a way to stay in the game, but to help the young guys. How are you enjoying this time with the Hitman so far? Because it's only been a couple of weeks, right? Yeah, I, I, honestly, I, I I feel like it was just a great opportunity. Coaching is always something I, I thought maybe I would want to get into when I'm done. Um, and it's just, yeah, it's giving back. But at the same time, it's it's finding out what... what I'm going to do and, you know, what direction I want to go for the rest of my life. I'm not just going to sit at home and do nothing. So, uh, and, and when I look at it, it's just a good fit. Um, you know, my, my last few years in the NHL, I was a fourth line center and a veteran on the team and a leader in the room. And, and I took it on myself as one of my, as one of my roles was to help the young guys along. That's, uh, that was part of my job description. I never lost sight of that. Um, you know, you, you worry about yourself, but it's about the team and, and, uh, you know, so I feel like I could use a lot of that, you know, and molding myself into being a coach and, and helping these young young men who are just starting out in junior hockey and learn to be pros. So I, I it's something it's a path I wanted to, to explore and, and see how much I liked it. And um, I think it's a good fit for myself. And I think I am going to like it. I've liked it so far. So we'll see how it goes. Yeah, good for you. Well, you I 
hardworking player. I watched a lot of your games. You'll be a hardworking coach. I think it's going to be a great fit. But as a career media guy like I am, 17 years in the Western Hockey League, I have to ask you what you liked and disliked about the uh, Sportsnet commentary because I saw you on the panel there with Brower, my, my boy Ryan Leslie, and um, not as easy as it looks, especially when you got to be critical, right? <laughs> I mean, with the Flames, they, they gave some opportunities uh, last year to be critical. Yeah, honestly, I, I really enjoyed it. Um, I have a great rela- relationship with, with Ryan Leslie, and, and you know, he really helped me along. And, and it's nerve wracking. It's, it's, there's nothing like, you know, talking in front of a camera, playing in front of 20,000 people, you know, is, is easy. Um, you know, talking in front of a camera under the pressure of, of knowing, you know, millions of people are watching, that's, that's a whole new level. Uh, making sure you don't stutter over your own words. So it, it was a challenge, and I feel like I got more and more comfortable, and it's something, you know, I could always go back to um, if, if I want to, but uh, I enjoyed it. Honestly, it kept me involved, you know, to watch the games. Um, you really dissect the games, uh, as you do when you play, but when you retire, you kind of get away from it. So it got me back into to really watching the games more closely, and, and yeah, there is a, a learning curve there to... You know, you gotta you gotta say it like it is, and and there's a way to do that, especially when when still a bunch of your buddies are still playing on the team. Um, you know, there's a there's a fine line there that you you wanna you wanna walk. So, um, if I, you know, we'll see down the road. But uh, I, I always felt you know being a part of a team and, and a coach was something I wanted to try before I really committed to doing the media thing. And and um, you know, so this is where I'm at right now, and and we'll see uh, what the future brings. Well, if you were nervous, uh, it certainly didn't show. And I watch almost every Flames broadcast. So uh, I just think that you're the kind of guy that would be successful at whatever you do. And on that Flames staff, by the, or the Hitman staff, by the way, a couple of beauties there with Steve Hamilton and uh, Trent Kassan. Yorkton Terrier's great. Talk about working with those guys on the Hitman staff, if you don't mind. Yeah, that, that was one of... Uh the things that, that drew me here this this kind of came out of the blue to tell you the truth joel auto unfortunately has steve seeing if i'd be interested i went in for an interview um and part of the the reason i got drawn here is because i knew i'd be learning from you know from steve and, and Trent, who have been in the game you know at this level for a long time and um and, and yeah, for me, it's, it's about helping these kids, but I also want to learn the side of the game and, and uh, you know, there's a lot to learn. So um, there are two guys that I felt were a great fit. You know, we have good times in, in the office there and, um, you know, and I, I feel like, uh, you know, I'm just trying to, you know, be a sponge uh, a lot of times here in the, in the dressing room, uh, watching, watching uh, Steve do his thing. What is, uh, just last one for you, Matt Stage, and what is the outlook for the Hitman? I, I'm more of an Eastern Division guy. I called the Regina Pats games in the 24-game bubble last year and every one of Connor Bedard's games, but I didn't see any of the Hitman games live. What's the outlook in the Central Division overall and uh, for the Hitman? Where do you see you guys fitting in? Yeah, I'm just learning all, all that, and, and it's, it's a bit of a wild card season, right, because the guys only played 20 games last year, um, so a lot of the rookies that were rookies last year, basically going to their full, first full year. So, um, you know, I think once we get guys back from, from NHL camps and you kind of see how it draws out, um, we'll, we'll see where we are. Um, you know, just talking, uh, you know, I think um, there's a few teams that, that, you know, Edmonton always has a good roster and, and they're probably the team to beat. But, um, you know, we'll see. I, it's... It's a fresh season, and, and everybody should have high hopes. And, and you know, we're, we're working to, to make these kids better each day and uh, come together as a team, and, and hopefully we can we can be in the mix there with them. Well, by the way, it's been a long time since you've been around, Junior, almost 20 years as I look at your hockey DB. So let me ask you this. How much has changed? <sighs> lots, lots. The, the resources these kids have... Um, it's unbelievable. I guess the whole hockey world shifted that way. The whole world, really. But the video, the the nutrition, you know, they have, you know, medical, the medical, the, the trainers, they have strength coaches, uh, the food they get on the bus after. It's it's a whole new level to back when I was in Belleville years ago where we had one trainer doing everything. He was the medical guy, the, 
the skate sharpening guy, the equipment guy, the he, he he did our workouts for us. So it's it's come a long way, um, and and it's good because they they learn to be pros a lot lot quicker, and um, so it, it's been an eye opener just to to see that. But I kind of expected that because the NHL is trended in that that direction. Everything follows suit suit below that in the hockey world. So um, it's exciting though. I think it's uh, it's just great to be back in the rank around around players and, and seeing the excitement on everybody's face uh, and hopefully playing in front of some fans here soon will be exciting for everybody. No kidding. Well, they call it uh, the mini NHL, the Western Hockey League, and I don't think there's any doubt that it is. Matt, uh, again, big fan for a long time, been hoping to get you on for a while. I appreciate the time here today, and good luck in your career and with the Hitman this year. Well, thank you, and yeah, anytime you, you want to chat, let me know. Appreciate it. Matt Stajan of the Calgary Hitman joining us from the Saddle Dome, as you can see. Hey, everybody. Thanks for watching the RP Show on YouTube. And don't forget, we're live daily on YouTube from noon to 2 Eastern. If you like what you see, hit subscribe. And if you like the program, check around for other segments of The Rod Peterson Show here on YouTube.